to putting ourselves as the viewer, kind of as the risk taker. We kept, kept saying, you know, that was a real struggle for us to get the painting, it was a real challenge, there was a risk in that. But the reality is we weren't taking a risk. We were having to work at it, but that's not really the risk. Um, and so fast forward to about a week ago, when we finally, something finally clicked yet again, and we realized that the risk taker in this equation um, is not us, the viewer, though the viewer might have to work to, um, to, to draw meaning. We realized that the real risk taker is the creator, so in this case, the artist, um, Thornton Dial. Um, and that, for us, risk taker being the creator, is sort of what we've been starting to kind of think about and what that looks like and what that means for us in our work as designers. I know there's a lot of design students in the room. Um, but just what that means in general, what it kind of means to be a creator um, and put something into the world. When you look at this piece, you're looking at Thornton Dial. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a person who put himself out there at the risk of rejection. And a lot of times as artists and creators, we put stuff out there that won't get rejected. And we concluded that, you know, I think sometimes the greatest risk is just to, to be yourself and to sort of be vulnerable and put yourself out there in so many ways. We tried to define risk and mm -hmm. the definition that we've come up with together is putting something out there that you believe in, not just something for the sake of being risky, but putting something out there that you believe in that you're not sure will be successful or not. Mm -hmm. uh, today I spent some time with Andrew Gage, the guy that owns Velo Coffee, and we were interviewing him for something with D plus J for our blog. And I, I was sitting with him asking him why, why is he so like, hell-bent on excellence mm. in creating the best, pardon my French, damn cup of coffee <laughs> in Chattanooga. And, and we, we talked about it and I realized, I said, so do you feel like you're taking a risk? Because of our conversation tonight, it was kind of serendipitous that it came up. And, and he said, you know, I didn't realize it in the beginning, but yes. And I still feel like I'm taking a risk. And he explained to me that in Chattanooga and in America in general, people love dark, black, big gulps of Starbucks coffee with sugar, with all kinds of condiments or whatever you want to call it inside of it. So you're not actually drinking coffee, you're drinking something else. And so he said, he's like, I've tried twisting people's arms, I've tried doing all this, and I, I, I realize I have this face who just loves real good coffee. And it's scary because I could just try to make what everybody else wants, which is, you know, like your Folgers or your Starbucks or whatever. Or I could really try to create something excellent. Mm -hmm. And so what he's doing is, in the process of doing this, he's expanding Chattanooga's palate. Mm -hmm. That's what she's talking about with enlightenment. Metaphorically speaking, our palates need to be extended by people taking risks. Mm -hmm. By people making a cappuccino this small instead of this big. By people not saying you can take an espresso out. Because it won't taste as good outside. Mm -hmm. You have to drink it within the first 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. But introducing those new ideas, mm -hmm. that's, to us that's where the risk comes in. It's introducing something into the world without the promise of reward. So introducing it and sort of boldly saying, I don't know that this is going to work. And you do it anyway, and you do it even if you fail, because you learn from the failure. Mm -hmm. You do it just, you know, whatever the reason, you do it. And so for us, that was sort of our connection to how this experience with the painting and sort of, you know, the risk that Thornton took um, to sort of boldly be who he was mm -hmm. allowed us to have a, a greater experience. And so if you sort of spin that back around onto the work that you all do, whatever that may be, um, we want to just encourage you to think about that. So what bold moves can you make? What small changes can you make? Whether it's in a product or a process or an offering or whatever it is that you do. So having defined risk as something that is someone, some group of people who really truly believe in something, putting themselves and their project out there with the risk of being rejected, with the risk of being not successful, with the risk of being ridiculed. Where have you seen that in Chattanooga? I see it with Theater for the New South, I see it with Tim Hink, I see it with David Jones up front who runs Graffiti Gallery, I see it with Wide Open Floor. Every single one of these, and these are not all of the representative parties, are taking extreme risks with their lives and with their professions and their long-term stability, their long-term reassurance of a, a, you know, a stable life. All of these people are doing these things and I get to work with each one of them. And it's amazing. Mm -hmm. My wife's a math teacher and a lot of her friends are teachers. 
every day they get in front of the students and pour their hearts out. That's a pretty big risk, in, in my opinion. I see it in neighborhood associations who go out of their way to find creative ways to violate city codes, <laughs> to instill <laughs> new activity and life into unused areas of the neighborhood. Mm. Taking risks does sometimes mean breaking the rules. <laughs> breaking the rules doesn't always mean taking a risk, though. This is a remarkable startup community, yeah. Chattanooga is, and I think anyone who is willing to leave the security of a given salary or just strike out on their own as, as a mm -hmm. business owner, as an entrepreneur, is risky mm -hmm. for lots of reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Business Development Center is an amazing gift to the city. Mm -hmm. UTC art students. Mm -hmm. who some of them are going into a, a field which may or may not promise lucrative careers, um, but they're doing it because of the passion or the curiosity. Mm -hmm. And that's um, inspiring to be around every day. People who were involved in pushing for and advocating for the, uh, and voting for benefits to same-sex couples for the city. Mm -hmm. Huge risk. Where do you think we as a city could take more risk? Public transportation and bike lanes. Uh, all that, just like MLK Street. There's so much potential with doing everything there, with just everything's closed, just all the streets. And then we're on the UTC campus, like there's all of those storefronts, and there's like Dollar General there and the rest of it. All those storefronts could be either restored, they could be reopened, anything could be There's open lots that can be used for uh, putting in social areas. All Chattanoogans don't have a place right now. Um, I think that's where our risk comes in. We're, we're taking risks in the most comfortable way. Um, mm -hmm. We're taking risks with the people we know will support us. Kind of within our own circles, um, it's exclusive risk and it's selfish risk a lot of the time because of that. As a creative person, it, risk is selfish for me. I'm like, ah, oh, what if I can solve this problem? Um, and I'm not selfless enough in the way that I uh, am motivated to push myself. I think Chattanooga's struggling with that. And it's preventing that sort of long-term, you know, truest foot forward. Mm -hmm. I think anybody who's willing to abandon upward mobility in order to stay and be here and work until you have a voice, or right, even in a place that in a lot of ways has a bit of a ceiling, right? We're not a big city, um, and you're not going to gain the same kind of acknowledgement you could in a big city, right? But still people stay here and are investing to be here. And mm -hmm. I think that's a huge risk. Mm -hmm. you know? Or are in the face of a different kind of society that doesn't allow for the same kind of voice, right? Mm -hmm. Same kind of acceptance.